All right, welcome to the Ravit Show. We are here at the Yolo Vision 2024, and look who I have with me—a long time <laughs> awaited uh, conversation and meeting. Harpreet Sota. Uh, he's working with Voxel 51 right now, but then he's also doing a lot in the com- data developer community space. So good to finally see you, Harpreet, and welcome to the Ravit Show. Yeah, man, good to get to meet you. Let's get this documented here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So, so good to finally meet you, man. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's been like, I think me and Arpreet have been connected since more than four or five years now. Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. And yeah. Uh, it has been such a great journey together, just on LinkedIn, but then finally good to meet face to face in uh, your, uh, which is such a great conference as well. So super excited to learn more about, first of all, what are you doing here at uh, this conference, Arpreet? Uh, how does, you know, YOLO brings you uh, to this Vision 2024 conference? Yeah, so I've been interacting with you know Yolo Vision and the community, uh, with Ultralist community rather for a couple of years. Um, so I've had Glenn on a episode of of, the po- of a podcast I did with him a while back, right. and he hit me up. He's like, "Hey man, would you uh, like to take part in a panel discussion?" Nice. And I was like, "All right, well, I'm on my way to Milan for ECCV. Let me just pit <laughs> stop in Madrid and come hang out." Uh, but yeah, I've been involved with them for you know the integrations that we have with Voxel 51, and then also yep. previously. Uh, do some work with Desi AI. Yeah, and I know for a fact where you're also coming up with a course very soon. Uh, do you want to uh, tell us a little about the Coursera course? Yeah. Who is it for? What can we expect from the course? And when is it coming out? Yeah, so got a course launching um, on September 30th. So just, you know, oh, depending. It's just, uh, all yeah. around the corner, right? Yeah, right, right around the corner or uh, the corner just passed, depending on when you're watching this, but it's a course called Hands-On Data-Centric Visual AI. Nice. Um, and so it's it's kind of, you know, people always talk about data quality is important, data-centric AI is a thing, but I've never seen any course that kind of actually puts it into practice. Like, what does this mean tangibly? Like, how can I reason about what data quality and, and data-centric AI means for visual AI? It's more about the application, right? Uh, how do you apply it, mm-hmm. the adoption that you... Yeah, and just really thinking about the relationship between, okay, how is it that quality, in this case we're doing you know, primarily visual AI, how does the quality of, of what is in my images actually impact my end model performance? Right. And so through this course, uh, YOLO, uh, the Ultralytics library, and of course YOLO V10, uh, and YOLO World as well played a a key role in the course because we're working with ultimately uh, the Ultralytics library to do inference and you know train a model. Nice. Uh, and we do this in conjunction with 51 for like the kind of understanding and data curation portion of it. So kind of bringing those two integrations together. That's fantastic. Also, I'm kind of curious to learn a little about uh, you know when you spoke about data quality. I know it has kind of evolved a lot in the last few. Months, I would say, you know, but in a few years, because AI, when we kind of talking about AI, uh, you know, <coughs> enterprise leaders kind of go back to data quality, and they're yeah. like, oh, if we don't have the data quality fixed there, or if we're not focusing on it, we can't have uh, AI, you know, the road to success to AI, right? Yeah. So I'm kind of curious to know a little about the data quality visual AI that you were talking about. How does it help the larger audience, the larger community out there? Yeah, I used to be of like this mindset that, you know, more just models, 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 tune the hyperparameter, add more layers, and just tweak the models, and maybe we'll end up getting a better result. But recently, you know, I I hear the words data quality, and I was like, yeah, whatever. I want to focus on the models. <laughs> <laughs> but now I, I truly understand that yeah. uh, d- data quality does play like a super, super important role in actually training a better model. Yes. And so my previous experience was working with mostly tabular data sets and yes. stuff that goes into a SQL database that you then pull out maybe using pandas and, and, and scikit-learn. Um, but I didn't, you know, the, the analog to that for deep learning and, and visual AI, I, I didn't know what that meant. Yeah. Um, and so really been exploring that a lot lately uh, for many angles, but, um, you know, I don't know how, how deep you want me to go in there, but, you know, there's so <laughs> many different things to think about for data quality. Um, you know, everything from the actual images that you capture and how good quality are those images? Are they unobstructed? Is there variety between classes? Are there you know, classes that are fully obscured, partially obscured to the labels themselves? Like, right. Is there a good annotation strategy in place so that your labelers know what to label and annotate things? Um, so really just going down the rabbit hole for that over the past few months. I love it. Uh, thanks for sharing those insights, uh, Preet. I'm kind of also 
uh, curious to learn a little about you know the community and what unique value do you think community participation brings to professional development in tech how does it all work uh, so can you tell us a little about that yeah I mean so I'm, I'm part of the panel discussion here we're, we're talking all about community and like the importance of, of community nice. and yeah it definitely does play a huge huge role right um, especially if you want to grow yourself as a professional if you want to learn more it is important to join some types of, of communities. Um, so, you know, specifically with, with the ultra latest community, you know, there's a product focused community or with the Vox 51 community, it's a product focused community. So uh, from that perspective, it's a great place to, to really master a, a, a product, right? Like if, if you want to learn a lot about the ultra latest library and you got questions, what better place to go than a community where people are experts on that? Or if you want to learn about how to use the 51 library, what better place to go than that community to like learn from actual practitioners and actual experts? Because usually we're limited by maybe the people that we work with or whoever's in our, our own Slack channels. But when we plug into these different communities, we have the expertise of like so many other brilliant, brilliant right. people. So yeah, right. super important. Love it. And also, uh, I'm wanting to know about if someone's now getting in the, this journey of data science and AI, there's so much for them to learn, right? And sometimes it's confusing too. What would be your advice? Because you've kind of worked your, you know, your way over the years and you're, you have like years of experience into the game, like with the developer community, with enterprise, with startups. What advice would you like to give to these folks? Yeah, I guess I've, I've had many different roles in data science, like everything from actuary to clinical trial statistician right. to data right. scientist and all this stuff. Um, but I think, like first and foremost, the biggest advice I would say is, and this is going to be counterintuitive and people might not uh, agree with it, but just it's fine. Start yeah. start with the application, like the you know start with just using a model and learning it and getting hands on and coding and ignore all the mathematics and all the details for now. Mm. Just get excited about using the technology, right? So if, if, if I had to, if I told myself I'm gonna learn about language models, vision language models, and computer science, but I'm, computer vision rather, but I'm not gonna do it until I can code back propagation by hand using nothing but NumPy, that, that's, a, that's like a, 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 a bad way of thinking, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, will you ever need to do that? Probably not, right? But people have this mentality that I need to first learn and study all the theory before I can start doing the application. But I think you start with the application first, start building, start developing. And then as you start to learn more and more, you'll encounter more problems, more like unique situations. And then, yeah, go and, and dig deeper. Um, but I wouldn't go from application straight to the textbooks and code. I'd, you know, uh, Sorry, textbooks and, and formulas and stuff. I'd go into source code and work my way through there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just get excited, right? And everyone has their own journey. Sometimes it might, you know, obviously uh, they are good with the application. They might just want to continue in this space. Mm -hmm. Some might feel like, oh, it's not for us. But then that's a good advice. Thank, thanks for sharing that, yeah. Arpreet. Uh, one last question for our audience. If they want to reach out to you, they want to learn more about Voxel, where can they do that? Yeah, uh, LinkedIn is good. Um, so look, look, up, look me up on, on LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, X, uh, Data Science Harp. Um, you know, Hugging Face, Harpreet Sahota, and uh, also Voxel51. Uh, I think it's just at Voxel51 on X. Nice. Uh, we've got a Discord community that we're launching. Uh, so if you're interested in joining that, come uh, check us out. Lots of things that are happening at Voxel51. Yeah. I know you all did a meetup as well recently in Boston. Yeah, yeah we had a meetup in Boston. We do uh, virtual events every month. Like nice. There's a couple of nice. them a month. Uh, but nowadays, we're going more and more in person. Uh, so primarily Boston. Uh, New York, San Francisco for now, Austin we've done, we've done one in London, everywhere actually. Uh, so if you are interested in, in speaking and sharing your knowledge with the community, definitely hit me up because we always like to have speakers whether they're in person or in virtual events. Nice. Um, the, the, the audience tends to be a lot of, uh, a lot of nerds like me, uh, practitioners, hands-on, uh, people who just love deep learning. That's awesome. So happy to meet you in person and uh, you know, super excited to be keeping the conversation going. Uh, and definitely looking forward to, uh, you know, learning more about your course. It's coming up next week. So yep. super excited about that and congrats on your course. Thank you very much, man. Thanks for having me. Cheers, Thank everyone. you, everyone.